Andrew has driven the new Defender, Land Rover Defender, and we can now talk about it. He can tell you what it's like. So, Andrew, I'm going to sit back, cross my arms, and just listen. Golly. Okay. Um, so, Defender. Um, everybody comes at it from a different direction, don't they? I mean, I've got um, friends who live in London, and they've got a Defender, and I don't think it's ever been outside the M25. Yeah. That's just that they've got a short wheelbase, nicely kitted out, um, 90 station wagon, and they just tool around London in it because, uh, well, certainly until ULES came in, that was kind of, you know, what they wanted to do. It was purely a, a fashion accessory. And then there's me. I mean, I still have the 1981 Series 3 in which I pass my test in my shed, and I still use it most weeks, and it's, you know, it's very much still the working vehicle it was designed to be. Um, and so, you know, you have those two poles, and you try and design a car to keep both happy. Exactly right. Um, you can't do it. Also, one which is compliant, yep. yeah, which crashes um, the way that it should crash, not the way that <laughs> Series 3s crash. Um, you just can't do it. So, you know, I always thought it was the ultimate poison chalice. Um, and I kind of... I couldn't understand how they were going to square that circle. Um, and I think they have been quite exceptionally clever because what they have done effectively is come up with a new Defender, but they've actually replaced two cars. Because the overwhelming thought that I had was not actually whether this deserves to be you know, thought of as being the new Defender, because it is so different. Because it rides and it handles and it stops and it steers and it behaves like you know, a modern car should behave. So in all those regards, it's nothing like a Defender. And anybody who is kind of hoping that it would be somehow um, is just deluding itself because that's literally not possible and certainly not desirable. Um, but it does have character. Not Defender character because I think that's gone these days. Mm. Um, you know, cars like that, and it's the reason people love classic cars and me as much as any of them, um, their character derives from them not being very good cars. And they need your help. You have to get involved. You know, you have to constantly correct their steering. Maybe their brakes don't work very well. Maybe it's, they're difficult to change gear or, or whatever. You're always doing stuff. You're always managing the vehicle. You're always, that means you're stuck in and you're involved. And that's where the character comes from. You don't do any of that stuff in modern cars. Mm. Point and squirt. So, you know, how do you engineer that character in, into a brand new car like a Defender? Um, and I think that as far as you could reasonably expect them to have done. That is what they have done. Mm. And I think that it does as much as it could replace the old Defender, but I think more importantly, and this is the second car I'm talking about, all those people who took one look at the Discovery 5, you know, when, when owning their Discovery thoughts and thought, well, that's not what I wanted. That's not what I thought I was buying into. That's not a Discovery. Well, it's now called Defender. Mm. You know, you could buy a tricked up, long wheelbase, you get a Defender with a three-liter petrol engine in it, you know, and you'll pay seventy-five grand for that. But you, get, you know, you could drop seventy-five grand into the Discovery without too much trouble, and you'll get a car that is, you know, quiet, um, well equipped, um, but still a proper workhorse. Mm. Or you could do what I would do, and just get literally a poverty spec short wheelbase car on steel wheels, uh, and just go yomping in it, um, and it would still be good enough to you know go as far as you like for as long as you like and not get on your nerves it's interesting and you've driven it off-road as well and i think you said it was pretty exceptional in the, the yeah it was exceptional i mean you always sort of you know first you know this is this is just old road testing uh, procedure you always look at the data first um and the data is you know if you look at approach angles departure angles breakover angles wading all that sort of stuff um its wading depth is 900 millimetres, which is as good as any other Land Rover. In every other respect, it's better. Mm. Um, it'll just do more stuff. But when you drive it off-road, I mean, I've been over the toughest things um, that Eastner Castle, where they develop these cars, can offer. Places which the chap who was with me was saying that if you tried 20 years ago, you'd need a military vehicle and a winch before you were even thinking about going in there. Um, what was far more impressive to me was um, how easy it made it. You know, it's possible, I suppose, that if you're a professional off-road driver, you could get an old Defender up some of those 
muddy, rock strewn, mm. root strewn um, hills. Don't know. Um, but with the Defender, what it does, um, and, and the, 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 this might sound a little bit antiseptic and clinical, but um, it's the speed at which it thinks. So when you've got to that bit where you lose traction and the car, you can feel the car slowing down and you can feel the car system thinking, oh shit, maybe a little bit more torque there, uh, maybe break that wheel, and all the time you're slowing down. The Defender doesn't do that. It thinks so fast. It just stays ahead of the curve. And so you never lose that momentum. So you keep going. You're never aware of the car grappling with a problem. It just does it. Um, and... I couldn't believe what it would go over. Mm. Um, you know, it was, and it has to be, doesn't it? I mean, God, come on. I mean, you know, it'd be, it would be like, you know, Ferrari coming up with a new Fer- La Ferrari, which wasn't quite as fast as the old one. I mean, yes. you know, you know, it, 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 you know, job one was to make sure that it would be the most capable off-roader probably anybody would ever produce, certainly the Land Rover would produce. And, you know, I'm no off-roading expert, but from what I've, I mean, I have never done off-roading in a car more extreme than that. And I've certainly never been more comfortable in a car while doing off-roading as extreme as that. So, yeah, it does that. And then it marries that remarkable off-road ability with uh, pretty civilised on-road manners. Yeah, like. I mean, <clears throat> as um, you will read, depending on when you are listening to this or have read, um, I was asked, um, because understandably the PR man couldn't help himself, what I thought of it. And literally the words that came to my mind was... I'm a bit worried it's not quite shit enough. Um, and, and, and this sort of harks back to what I was saying about the involvement thing and old cars and that sort of thing because, you know, it is the sort of car that you want to get stuck into and I'm sure that if you, if you spend a lot of money and you've got the big petrol engine and lots of equipment, you could have an incredibly civilised Defender. A, a, a Defender which was probably in most ways that matter, um, you know, not a lot less civilised than a Discovery. Mm. Um, but I, funnily enough, I drove it both on the all-season and on the all-terrain proper off-road tyres on the road. And I just preferred it on the road on the off-road tyres because it was just a bit more wobbly and a bit more vague. Uh, and it felt a bit more like, I kind of remember Defenders feeling. Mm, okay, um, a bit more distinctive, a bit more character. A bit more distinctive, a bit more character. A bit worse, clearly. Yeah, yeah. A bit more shit. Mm. Um, but that's all right. So overall then, the, the job they've done on the new Defender smashed it. Yeah. Could do more? Well, God knows, no car's perfect. Um, they could do lots more. Um, it doesn't have, you know, I, I was kind of hoping that there'd be some, you know, uh, my old Series 3, it's got, you know, it's got levers and handles and all sorts of that. And I, and I would have liked to have seen some more of that on the Defender. Um, it doesn't really have very chunky switch gear. It's got TFT screens, mm. you know, high definition screens. I just want clocks. Now, I know that... <laughs> You know, these things aren't very practical um, in the modern era and you've got to use stuff that you can use across all your platforms. But I would have just preferred a little bit more of a head and on to that sort of thing. But, you know, within reason and given the frankly almost impossible job that they're asking it to do, yeah, I would say not beyond my wildest dreams, but as good as I think any reasonable person could hope and expect it to be. I'm so looking forward to driving this car. Um, I haven't done so yet. Can you give us a, a rating out of 10? I think I gave it a 9. Sorry. I mean, good, goodness knows I wanted to give it a 10. I was kind of really thinking, can I, can I? Because it would only be the second one that we'd ever done. Yeah. Um, for those people who are not familiar with the Instagram Drive Nation, uh, like all people who review cars, we have a, um, a verdict and a rating um, but our ratings are a bit different insofar as if you're absolutely the best car in your category, you may still only get a nine. Um, to get a 10, you need to change the game. You need to be, do it in a completely different way and in a way that genuinely sheds proper light on whatever discipline it is that you're attempting. And so far, the Alpine A110 is the only car that we have tested which we felt deserved that. And yeah, the defen- I'd love to have done I, God, Goodness knows I'd love to give them that a 10. Um, but no sorry okay nine well that means it's still a remarkable car 